All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be building a animated page progress bar using JavaScript. Now to demonstrate this, what I've created here is a sample blog post and how this will work is as we continue to scroll down this page, we're going to create a progress bar that'll be here at the very top of our page and it's gonna indicate how far the user has scrolled down. So what we're going to be doing here is what they call a scroll animation, which I think are really cool. They're really simple to implement and they can add a lot of value to your web page. All right. So if we scroll down this page here, you'll see at the very top, we're going to have our progress bar start to show the progress. And as we continue to scroll down, it'll fill up. And as you can assume at the very bottom of the page, the progress bar will be completely filled. All right. And if we continue to scroll back up, it'll go ahead and revert. So that's what we're going to be building. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you want to follow along, I've created a branch here on the GitHub repository for this project for the starting files. Now, if you click on the link down below in the description, it'll take you to this page we're on right here. This contains the finished version of this tutorial and our progress bar. Now, if we want to get the starting files, what we need to do is they have this drop down menu here, which currently says master. We want to switch branches to the starting files branch here. Now from here, we can download the code. So we can click on the green button here and we can download this zip. Now, once this is downloaded, we want to extract the files and we're going to open it up with your text editor of choice. And in my case, we're going to be using VS code here. All right. So if we open this up, you can see these are the starting files. We have an images folder app.js, which has some comments in here to indicate what we need to do to make this progress bar happen from a functionality standpoint. We have our index.html and we have our style.css. Now to go ahead and preview all the changes we're going to make inside of our file here, we're going to be using an extension called live server, which is available inside of VS code here. So if I click on my extensions tab here, we're going to be using this live server plugin, which if you've been coding with VS code, I'm sure you've seen this uh, extension before, so it shouldn't be anything new to you. But if not, this is what we're going to be using to display our HTML file inside of our browser. So let's open up our HTML file here. So we'll right click on it and we will open it with live server. And this is going to be our sample blog post here. So first off, what we want to do is create the markup that's going to be necessary to display our progress bar here inside of our HTML file. So where we're going to do this is inside of our body tag, but outside of our container, because we want this progress bar to take up the full width of the browser window. Now, simply all we need for this is we're going to create a div and we're going to give it a class and we're going to say page progress. All right. And that's all the markup we're going to need here. Now inside of our style sheet here, what we want to do is apply some styles. So we'll do this right below our reset here. So we'll say uh, page progress. And what we want to do is position this fix. So that way, as you scroll down the page, this uh, progress bar will always be present. So we will say position and set this to fixed. Now we want to set the top to zero we'll do the left to zero and we'll pass a background and we're going to use a linear gradient. So we'll do background and we'll say linear gradient. Now the direction you want this to uh, go, we're going to say two and we'll pass right. And the colors we're going to use are going to be a six, one, seven FF. And then the other color is going to be six, two, three, six, and it's cut off here. And then the last two are FF here. Okay. Now what we also want to do is apply a box shadow here. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. And then lastly, we want to apply a height here. So we'll do a height value and we'll say eight pixels. Now, if we save this and we go over to our browser, we can see that we don't have our progress bar because we haven't set a width. Now, what we're going to do is as we scroll down here, we're going to listen for that event of scroll and we're going to calculate how far the user has scrolled down the page to fill out the progress bar. Now, to make sure everything's working correctly, let's just apply a width here uh, by default. So we'll say width here and do 255 pixels, something like that. And as you can see, this is what our progress bar is going to look like. But we want to go ahead and apply the width using JavaScript. So for now, we will remove this width value here. 
Now the JavaScript for this progress bar is pretty simple and straightforward. So to begin, what we need to do is store our progress bar inside of a variable. Now what I mean or refer to by our progress bar is this div that we created right here that has a class of page progress. So we need to store this in a variable. So we will call this progress bar and we'll set it equal to a document.querySelector and we'll target it by the class name and let's do another quote there and we'll say page progress. All right, now next what we wanna do is create a function to dynamically set the width of this progress bar right here based on the current user scroll position on the page. So we'll create a function and we're gonna call this set progress and we'll set it equal to an arrow function. Now, the first thing that we need to do in order to calculate what the current width of the progress bar is, is we need to determine the max scroll height of our document or our page. So we'll add a comment here and we'll say calc max scroll height like this. Now to do this, we need to create a few variables here. So the first one we're gonna call scroll height. And we want to get the entire height of our document in, in pixels. So to do this, we'll call document.body.scrollHeight here. Now, next up, what we want to do is we need to get the viewport height. And I'll go ahead and explain why we need this in a moment, but we'll go ahead and at least obtain this value. So we'll call this variable viewport height like that. And we'll set it to the window.inner height. All right. Now let's just go ahead and log these two values out of the console as I wanna show you why we need to go ahead and use these two. So we'll say scroll height and then viewport height here. Now what we wanna do is we'll say window.onload and we'll set this equal to a function. So once the window has loaded, we'll call this and we'll say set progress here. Now what I also wanna do is get the current user scroll position. So to do this, we'll call a event listener here. So we'll do window dot add event listener and we'll listen for the scroll event and we'll run our callback. Now what I want to log out here for now is going to be the current user scroll position on the Y axis. So we'll do console dot log and we'll say scroll and we can say Y here. Now if we head over to our browser, we should see a few values in our console. So what we see here is the current height of the entire document and we see our viewport. So if I actually refresh this here, it should change to account for the uh, viewport of 914. So we can see the entire document is 3,429 pixels and the viewport is 914. Now, if we scroll here, you're gonna see the current scroll position based on the Y value or on the Y axis in pixels. So right now, we scroll down 100 pixels. So theoretically, what you should, or what you would think happen, would happen here is as we scroll down, we should get to the end and the value should be 3,429. But let me show you what happens. So if we scroll all the way down here, you can see the value only goes to 2,515. Now, that's kind of odd. You would think that the final scroll position would be the value of 300 or 3,429. Now that's not the case. It doesn't take into account the viewport height here. So if we subtract these two numbers, then we'll go ahead and get this value right here. And we can use that calculated value to determine how far the user has scrolled down on the page in a percentage. All right. So hopefully that makes sense. So let's create a new variable that's going to calculate the true max scroll height. Now to do this, like I mentioned, we want to take our scroll height and we want to subtract it from our viewport height. So we'll say const max scroll height and we'll set this equal to scroll height minus our viewport height here. So viewport height. Now to go ahead and explicitly show you how this works, let's cancel out the max scroll height here and check it out within our browser. So if we go back over to the browser here and we do a refresh, you can see that the max scroll height is gonna be 2,515. Now, if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we should see that the ending value of our scroll position on the Y axis is gonna be 2,515. So if we go all the way down here, you can see that the final value that we're getting here is 2,515. 
So let's remove this console.log of our max scroll height and what we want to do is calculate the percentage that the user has scrolled down on our document. So let's create a new variable here called percentage and let's set this equal to a calculation. Now to calculate the percentage that the user has scrolled down, we're gonna take the current scroll uh, value on the y-axis and we want to divide this by our max scroll height. Now to convert this from a decimal into a percentage, we just need to multiply this by 100. All right, so just to show you this is working, let's log this out of the console and we'll do percentage here. Now what we also want to do is instead of calling this function on load, we don't need to do this anymore. Let's remove this logging of the scroll Y and just call our set progress function here on the scroll event. So now if we go over to our browser and we start to scroll, you should see we're now getting what is a percentage. So you can see right now I'm 5% scroll down the page and if I go you know, halfway down, we're at 44, 46. You can see that now we're getting a percentage that we are scrolled down on the page. So what we wanna do is set the width of our progress bar to this percentage right here. So let's remove this logging of the percentage and we're gonna target our progress bar and we'll do the style and we'll set, I don't know why it does that. We'll do the width and we'll use some interpolation. So we'll be using some back ticks and we'll have our money sign and our brackets. And we're gonna go ahead and insert the percentage here. And then we'll say percent like that. So now if everything is implemented correctly, we should have some width to our progress bar based on the current percentage that were scrolled down on the page. So let's test this out by scrolling down the page. And as we do, you can see that our progress bar starts to fill. And if we get all the way to the bottom, it should be completely filled, which it is. And if we start to scroll back up, it should start to unfill. Now, really quick, I would like to mention that I only recommend using this progress bar if your document has a decent amount of scrollable content. Now, in our example here today, this sample blog post, we have a good amount of scrollable content. So as we scroll down the page, the progress bar looks really good. Now, for example, if we remove some of the scrollable content here and we save it, you can see that now the progress bar is gonna fill up very abruptly and quickly, and it just doesn't look that good. So I wanted to mention this in the event that you implement it into your project, your website, and your expectation doesn't resemble what we built here today. All right, that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up for our animated page progress bar using JavaScript. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.